Praise the Lord. Like I said, I was just thinking, you know, about today and all of that. And the scripture came to my heart. John 8, 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Amen. If you abide, if is a word that means condition, a condition. And who was he talking to? To Jews who believed in him. So he wasn't even speaking to unbelievers. Amen. He was speaking to believers. And he said, if you abide. If you abide means if you remain, if you continue. Amen. If you continue, not just touch and go. Amen. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. That means it takes a process to really become a disciple indeed. Verse 32, and you shall know the truth. That means knowing the truth is not what happens automatically. If is a condition. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth. You know, that, that, that just jumped at me. And the truth shall make you free. You know, there's something liberating about the truth. In the, what does truth, the word truth, just to define it first of all, before going into what it is, just to define truth, the word truth. Truth means dependability, reliability, amen, Reality, accuracy, integrity. You know, in, the, um, in Galatians 5, when the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, some translations say, say faith, but some actually render it as faithfulness. That is actually the, the, the right thing there. It's faithfulness, a fruit of the Spirit. So the word truth is reliability, faithfulness, dependability, reality, accuracy, integrity. Truth is the opposite of falsehood or lie. You know, when somebody says something like, is that true? Are you speaking the truth? You know, if you're going to be a witness in the court, you're going to take an oath and say, you know, what I want to say is the truth and nothing but the truth. And if they, they found out that you were lying, that's perjury. And you can wind up in jail for that. So, truth is the opposite of falsehood or lie. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7, Paul was speaking. He said, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. Paul was saying, I'm speaking the truth. That, you know, to tell you I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, I'm telling you the truth. So truth is, you know, the opposite of, fo of falsehood or lie. The opposite of fictitious, feigned, or false. Truth denotes veracity, reality, sincerity, Accuracy, integrity, truthfulness, dependability, and propriety. The Bible says whatever is true, think on these things. Amen. Th truth means, you know, genuineness. If something is true, it is genuine. Amen. In 1 Peter 1, verses 6 to 7, Peter was speaking to the um, Christians, the, the believers, the Jewish believers, said, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Verse 7, why? That the genuineness of your faith, the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Christ. 
when will, we, when will it be found? At the revelation of Christ. Now I remember doing a message during one of our women's breakfast on something on, uh, what would I title when I was talking about truth? You know, and I was talking about certain things. I didn't title it truth, but I was saying something about, and I said, you know, sometimes, you know, the difference between costume jewelry and uh, real gold or silver is when it passes through fire. Is that not, is that not true? That is true. That's what they're saying here. That the genuineness of your faith. He said, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Those trials have come to test the genuineness of your faith. Amen. Because when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. The Bible says when God brought them out of the land of Egypt, he didn't take them through a shorter cut. Lest, you know, they will see wars and turn back. He said, I led you through the wilderness to what? To test you, to humble you. So Peter is saying here, you know, I was saying, you know, one of the times, one of the sessions, I think yesterday, you know, when we had the weekend away, that, you know, the way a lot of Christians are being built up right now, should there be any trial, they're just going to abandon the faith. But that is not our portion in Jesus' name. So that's the genuineness of your faith. So when we talk about truth, we're talking about what is, we're talking about genuineness. You know, there's a scripture where the Bible says, many men will profess their, their goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Praise God. You know, a guy comes to you, back at home, we have a slang. We say, person comes to toast you. Amen. Or comes to get fresh. You have many of those words, getting fresh with you, amen. You know, before you get up, you know, get, so before you grab your cup, grabs it. About to get into the car, he opens the door, amen. And, you know, how do you know he's real? A lot of men will profess how whatever, how much in love they are, but a faithful man who can find. A faithful man is a man who stays through thick and thin, when it's good and when it's not good, when it's rough and when it's smooth. You know, like the vows that, you know, uh, people exchange in marriage for better, for worse. And I remember one time, you know, some faith Christians came to say, for better, for best. Richer for richest, for healthy for healthier. And I say, you're all fake. You know, if somebody writes a, 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 a vow like that, don't, 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 don't bother. You know, because, you know, you look at people. You must be in for the long haul. You must be in when it's good and when it's not good. Praise God. You know, when I look at Joey and Morishka, I'm not saying this because they're here. I've spoken about you even in Africa. When I look at the commitment of this man to this woman, when I look at the commitment, the love, and next year by God's grace, they are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. I don't know of how many Christian men. At times they say, in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. And she's still sitting down. You go and come back. You're still sitting down. Rise up and walk. They come back, she's still there. You don't have faith. You don't have faith. Before you know it, they will not be shouting his name because there's no more sitting beside. You understand? And then before you know it, mm -hmm. somebody else is helping him to carry his Bible. Anyway, many men will profess their goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Praise God. Genuineness. Dependability. Fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness. You are there. 
Come rain, come shine. You know, yesterday when I was talking about relationship, I said for some people, project is more important than people. You know, sometimes you give people time because people are important. Not because you didn't have where you were going or what you were planning to go and do. But you stop to give attention because people are important. Amen. You know, there are times that I know that maybe the time I'm giving to someone, I have to make up for it in the middle of the night. But I'm like, well, you know, Jesus said, you don't have me with you all the time. There are times, you know, you do stuff, you know what you're doing, and you know you're going to have to make up for it somehow. But you want to seize that moment with that person. You know, because it built something. Sometimes, you know, when people face a situation, they stop being dependable. They stop being reliable. But I wanted to know that that is the time your reliability is tested. That is the time your faithfulness is tested. Not when things are rosy. Amen. Not when things are rosy. Bible says the brother is born for adversity. For time of adversity. For times when things are rough. So when we talk about truth, we're talking about re reliability. Among other things. Praise God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. Paul was speaking to Timothy. He said, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Genuine faith. Not just coming forward to make the confession. That's the start, of course. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess that he died for me. I whatever, whatever, blah, 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 blah. That is a start. Amen. But, are you going to, you know, keep that on? The genuine faith, that means there will be, there is fake faith. Feigned faith. You know, a lot of times, you know, those things happen back at home. I'm sure they happen everywhere. Where a guy comes around to church, because there's this girl in the choir singing, oh! And you know, sometimes when guys want to settle down, something in them tells them that I need to get a girl in church. What they don't know is that there are some girls in church now that... Anyway, so they come and they zoom. You know, and you go, I believe in Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my Lord. And inside, you are my Lord too. You know, they say all that prayer, but the truth is this, the genuineness of your faith. How genuine is your faith? How genuine is your faith? Amen. How genuine is your faith? You want to begin to ask yourself. In John chapter 18, 37 to 38. Now I want to begin to, to look at what is truth. I've defined truth. What is truth? In John chapter 8, from verse 37, Pilate therefore said to him, Jesus, that's Jesus, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should be a witness to what? The truth. That I should be a witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Have you noticed that if you are of the truth, there are certain things you hear. And if you are not of the truth, no matter what they say, you are not going to hear it. So Jesus said, I came to be a witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Verse 38, Pilate said to him, what is truth? What is truth? 
What is truth? The first thing I want to say is that truth is Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. So Pilate said, what is truth? Truth is who? In John 16 verse 4, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, we used to sing that song in the old, we used to call it SU days. SU means scripture union. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus says. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus is the truth. So if you want to know what is truth, Jesus is the embodiment of truth. He is the truth. Amen. He is the faithful and the true one. You know, he said, other people have come before me. I'm the true shepherd. The false ones have come. He said, a true shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I'm the true shepherd. I'm the genuine one. Amen. And that was why when they were persecuting the, the apostles, the believers for preaching Christ, and they were going down, you know, the guy said to them, he said, many people have risen up preaching all kinds of things and declaring all kinds of things, but today they are no more. So if the counsel of these guys is of God, it's going to stand. And has it not stood? Even the test of time? Amen. Guys have come on, they've said all kinds of stuff, but they're not there. Jesus is the truth. And that's why we must build our lives on him. He is the truth. Every other thing is fake. He is the truth. And that's why the hymn that talks about, you know, uh, um, standing on, on, on not, not, not the promises, um, that, that's that, uh, on, on the, uh, um, all of the grounds, a sinking sand. His oath is covenant and all of that. They are the true things. All other ground are what? Sinking sand. Praise God. So Jesus is the truth. He is the truth. Build on him. Trust in him. He will never let you down. Trust in him. He is the way. He is the truth. You cannot miss it if you follow him. You're not going to miss it if you follow him. No matter the temporary setbacks you seem to be having, he is the truth. What else is the truth? The word of God. Can someone say the word of God? He is the truth. Amen. You know, like they say in, um, in the language of where I live in Kano, Gaskia. Amen. Gaskiani. That's the truth. Amen. Is the truth. The word is the truth. Anything you find in the word is the truth. I'm not talking of your own interpretation of it. I say the word of God. Amen. Bible tells us in um, John 17, Jesus speaking. In John 17, 15 to 17, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Your word is reality. Your word is truth. That's why Jesus was speaking in, in Luke chapter 6, talking about the, the foolish builder and the wise builder. He said the wise builder is the one who comes to him, hears his word, and builds on the word that he hears. That's the one that is the wise builder. 
He digs deep and lays the foundation of his building on the words of Jesus Christ. He said the winds come, the, 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 the floods, the rains, but that house remains what? Standing. But the one who is a foolish one is the one who comes, hears the word of truth, the word of God, which is the truth, but doesn't obey, doesn't do it. And you can see that the two of them built. They both built. You know, in Psalm 127, the Bible says, um, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build. That means you will still build. You should understand that. It's not that you will not build. Like we talked about genuineness, it's always proven at the end of something. The Bible says, you know, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build. That means you can build. You know, the race is not to the swift. Is that not true? The race is not to the swift. You can run, and it's like you have run ahead of everybody. But if you are not building on the truth, it's going to catch up with you. Because it's not about how you started or when you started. It's not, it's not about when you started or what you're doing. It's about how you end up. That's the truth. See, again, that's the truth. It's the truth. That's the truth. We've seen them come, we've seen them go. The Bible says the flower fades. The grass withers. But the word of God abides forever. Hallelujah. The Bible says the world and all its fashion are passing away. But he that doeth the will of the Lord abides forever. The Bible says some trust in horses, some in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. They are falling down, but we are risen forever. Hallelujah. That is the truth. You see again, that's the truth. <laughs> Nothing but the truth. It's not about how you started or when you started. You know, I knew people in those days. You know, I remember those days back in the days. You know, you ask a child to put their head, you know, if your hand doesn't touch your ear, you don't start school. Stay with your mama. But now, a time came, you know, people were fast forwarding things. Modernization, civilization, as defined by some people. And then people thought they were smarter. I knew of people, you know, what you call GS, G, GCSEs here. I knew of a girl who wrote hers at age 13. Yeah. She was going to turn 14 in, uh, in October. She wrote her GCSEs, you know, normally like here, May, June. I mean, but later it's caught up with her. She couldn't cope. So those people who said, you know, it's not just enough for a child to be academically smart. There are social skills, there are social development, there are other things that will affect that child. Jesus grew in what? Wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. I have people like that. They couldn't cope with the pressure of the society. You are in a class with people who are about four years older than you, three years older than you. It's going to affect you somewhere. So when people thought they were smart and they thought they were, you know, overtaking certain things, you know what? You just get right in front and you meet. You know, it's like when you're speeding. And then you feel you have beaten all the cameras. And right in front, you see a police car. You are like, oh my God. Is that not true? You are like, I'm so smart. 
You wouldn't begin to say, oh, those cameras are not working. They're fake. All of them. You wouldn't know you are the fake you. You are fake. <laughs> you doing 70 when you should be doing 50. You are the fake one, not those cameras. That's the truth. You see again? It's the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he began to catch up with those kids. And I saw quite a, just um, one or two, three of them. And I knew of someone who said, you know, don't rush my child. At the right time, the child will whatever. And when the child turned six, she got into primary one. She was beating everybody in class, coming up tops. When children, you see some children, you know, with, what do you call that, bad, I mean, a four-year-old, I'm like, where is this child going? This is child abuse. Where, where, where is this child going? Then she finishes, then she goes for lessons. You know why? That the parents can. It catches up later. Is that okay? That's the truth. It is the truth. You must ask yourself, am I building just for now or for eternity or for a lifetime? Am I building something that we endure or something that will just be like a flash in the pan? We've seen them come, we've seen them go. We've seen people who were so rich and after a while they could not even pay their bills. Amen. I like that kind of slow and steady wins the race. Success. Amen. You know, after a while, it doesn't, it's, it's no more slow. You remember the water that was being added in Ezekiel 47? You could see the way it was rising. It was rising. It gets to a point where <clears throat> it there's a speed. Is that not true? But in that beginning, it looks like it's like when you plant something, it's like how long is it going to be in that soil for? But after a while, you're like, wow, I saw this tree yesterday. It was just like this. Not today, it's like that. It's like that. Praise God. One thing by God's grace that my husband and I can testify about is that, you know, our growth has been steady. Amen. Because God has helped us and continues to help us to build on the truth. That's how we can stand and give the testimony. You know, about when we were living in whatever, barely get along avenue, um, street, next to Grumble Alley. Amen. Thank God not in Grumble Alley, but just next where you were paying your bills instrumentally, and you can, you know, you can explain the process. Amen. Process. Can someone say process? You can explain. They should not see you today begging for money. Then tomorrow you have gone to, you are living in a mansion. You should be able to explain yourself. Because wealth quickly gotten will not last. The Bible says it. Thank you, Nikki. True. It is the truth. You should be able to explain. Even if an angel came to give you money, you, you should explain to us any inexplicable whatever. I don't want to be a part of it. It's very suspicious. Amen. You should be able to tell us. Amen. You are single today. If you show up LJ tomorrow with uh, rings in your hand, you should come and tell me what happened between last night where I saw you at the weekend away. You can say, ah, pastor, don't worry, it's just fake. I'm just flashing it. And then I know that it's fake. <laughs> but you can flash things like that. It's a free, free world. Amen. You can flash Tell someone is allowed. You know, there was a case of someone like that. My husband would remember, you know, as I'm telling the story now, in, you know, years ago, back in Kano, um, she said to me, um, she was seeing this guy, and uh, she said, um, I'm going to come to Kano. She used to be in Kano, but she was now oh, out of Kano. I'm going to come to Kano with a guy, introduce the guy to you and Reverend, and uh, do some counseling and all of that. Fine. 
She didn't show up when she said she was going to come. We actually did a school, a marriage school for a month. So she said she will come with a guy. So that would be a period where they will, you know, whatever. Because usually we have these things back at home. You have to go through counseling for a number of months and all of that. But, you know, fast tracking. I said, that's fine. I could do that for you. You come that one month. We'll be. She didn't turn up with the guy. The next time I saw her, you remember, she came to our house. Thank God for my husband who asked questions. She entered with this guy. That was the first time I've seen the guy in my life. They both had wedding bands. I saw it, but I couldn't ask. I'm like, so, <laughs> so I said, where did you people stay? Because her parents, her father lives in, in Kano. Oh, so uh, 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 did you stay at your, in your father's place? I said, no, we stayed in a hotel. Oh, we are now married. Anyway, long story short, she got out as fast as she got in. She never brought the guy for the counseling. The next time she showed up, she had rings. They both had wedding bands. Both of them. So, my husband was asking. Amen. I like it when I'm there, when he's asking. So I can get all the information. Because <laughs> me, when the person is gone, I'm like, was that not a ring? <laughs> did, I not, did I not see a ring? He said, why didn't you ask her? Because I have to be very comfortable with someone before, you know, I have to be very comfortable. Then I can't like, come here. <laughs> Where do you see this? <laughs> but my husband doesn't have to be. It is a good combination. Amen. <laughs> God is a good matchmaker. Praise the Lord. So, the truth. Jesus said, when you come, when you hear my word, not only hear my word, you build. You do what the word says. The winds will come. The storms will come. Not if, but when. You know, when my husband keeps talking about when he embraced, even before he met who was going to marry, which is me, by the way, excuse me. <laughs> even before he met me, he's been standing on Ephesians 5. A man shall love his wife as Christ loved the church. You see, that is not subject to your feeling. Amen. If you wake up feeling unmarried, you are very married. No matter how you feel, it doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the truth. The word of God is the truth. Can someone say the word is the truth? So when this man, what's his name again? Was it Pilate who said, what is truth? That is the truth. Hallelujah. Write down Psalm 119 verse 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is truth. God's law is truth. Bible says happy is he who keeps the laws. Where there's no revelation of the people, they perish. Happy is the man who keeps the laws. There are laws guiding everything. Praise God. Another one you should write down under that subject is um, verse 160 of Psalm 119. The entirety of your word is truth. The entirety. This is not about having some juicy, you know, preferably yellow in color. No. This is having, knowing that the entirety, even the one that doesn't sound very exciting, is still the truth. Because some of us have selective scriptures. I like that one. I don't like this one. It's not about picking and choosing. Amen. You know, like children, you know, they can say, I like, I like auntie, so, so, and so. Okay, pack your bag and go and live with auntie, so, so, and so. You know, I don't know when last we used the dishwasher in our house. So my girls went to visit Mama Audrey. <clears throat> And they came back. Mom! 
We had the dishwasher, tab dishwasher tablets. Why, can't, why don't we use the dishwasher in this house? I said, you are going to relocate to Mama Audrey's house. From there, you'll be coming to church and going to your school. <laughs> She'll feed you, house you. You now have a new mama. Girls, behold your mama. So, you know, children are like that. The girls go, they have this idea. Amen. They feel that, you know, when they are little, they are like that. They feel that Sam's mom is sweeter. Because they saw that Sam's mom was allowing Sam to have sweets. <laughs> so just pack their bags and let them go to Sam's mom if Sam's mom will have them. Because most likely she won't have them. And they will be stranded and coming back begging like the prodigal son. Amen. So have you got that scripture? The word of God is what? Truth. Truth. Let me also tell us what truth is. Truth is an experience. Truth is an encounter. As different from head knowledge. In John 8.32, which is our text, Jesus said, and you shall know the truth. Amen. So you can encounter truth. You can experience truth. Because Jesus is the truth. The word is truth. Amen. You see, God wants us to encounter the truth. To experience the truth. To have an experience. I like the way the Message Bible puts it. Someone says she has to go and buy three Bibles because Pastor Fung is always going between from one <laughs> translation to another. The Message Bible says, then you will experience for yourselves the truth. When I was thinking about this, that's how I came about having many translations anyway. I'm like, truth is an experience. But let me get the scripture, the, the, the translation Maybe there's a translation that brings that out. I never knew Message Bible wrote it that way. It was my quest. Because I thought about it. When Jesus said, when you know the truth. It's like saying, when you get to know somebody. Hallelujah. It's an encounter. It's an experience. And I found out that the message, I went through Amplified, I went through the living, New Living Translation. Then when I saw it, I said, wow, praise God. Then you will experience for yourselves, the truth. So it's all head knowledge. It's an experience. It's an encounter. Hallelujah. And let me say this to you. Truth has to do with character, lifestyle, way of life. Can someone say way of life? That's why Jesus said, if you continue in my word. You can't say someone is truthful just because you met them once. You know, I have all kinds of people. Amen. I remember one of my girls back at home. It was, you know, there was this guy that was going around her. Amen. So I said, so what's the, what's the catch? She said, he keeps his word. I said, which word? Which word has he given you already that he has kept? As he said he wanted to marry you, what, what word? How do you know he keeps his word? Amen. Truth is what? A way of life. That's why it's dependability, reliability, amen, faithfulness. So truth is not just, ah, oh, head knowledge. It's an encounter. It's an experience. It's a way of life, lifestyle. Praise God. Way of life, character. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, and many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth. Can someone say the way of truth? Have you ever met people that you said that they are living a false lifestyle? Have you met them? So truth is a lifestyle. 
My lifestyle can be truthful. It can be a lie. Is somebody listening to me? That's true. The Bible says what? And the what? The way whom the way of truth. Truth is a way. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life. There are many marriages that have broken down because people got married and from the first night they found out that a lot of things were false. From the top of the head to the (laughs) soles of the feet. I will leave that to people to decode. True. (laughs) I mean, there was a man who got married and by Sunday he was angry. He went to the pastor. I'm calling this off. They said, but you just got married yesterday. Because overnight he found out. And if you thought that wasn't true, what I'm saying, check out Jacob, Leah, and Rachel connection. Uncle Laban. Played the fast one on Jacob. Jacob thought she was get, he was getting Rachel, but got Leah. And when he found out it was too late, truth, way of life. So I like one guy, you know, going out with this lady and then, you know, he now asked her, I would like to see your real hair. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> True story. You know, sometimes in, the, in this midst of so many things going on, you know, when somebody does the braids, the braids could get hair, but the hair could be hair. So you, you, you need to, the hair could be hair, the true, true. So at some point, you have to like, because I've seen people, poor guy, maybe the attraction is, you know, God, I thank you. My mother had a long hair. I've always dreamt about the woman with the long hair. Ask her. Amen. Ask. I won't charge you for this information I'm giving you because this is a very whatever information. Amen. Just ask her between both of you. Amen. It's, 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 you need to ask. I remember one guy was saying, ah, you know, my wow, my the girl, you know, she's first kind, and we all knew she wasn't. Ask her about the picture before and after. It's very important. In those days, you know, people had married people because someone sent them pictures from Africa. And when they met the person at the airport, sharp contradiction. Truth. Amen. Character, lifestyle, way of life. Second Timothy 2, 11 to 13. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall live with him. This is what they call truth. Faithful saying. If we what? Died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, verse 12, we shall also reign with him. Jesus said he who endures to the end shall be saved. If we deny him, He also will deny us. Did Jesus not say it? If you deny me, I'm going to deny you before my father and and the angels. So if you say I don't know him, he's going to deny you. And you know what? Where he's going to deny you will be very painful. Before his father. Who are you praying to? Our heavenly father. Who sits at his right hand to make intercession for you? Jesus Christ. And he said, if you deny him, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, he said it himself. If you deny him, he will deny you before the Father and his holy angels. But if you confess him before men, he will confess you before the Father and his angels. And Peter is saying here, this is what? A faithful statement. It's a faithful saying. If we deny him, he also will deny us. But verse 13, I like this one. If we are faithless, He remains faithful. Why? He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny who he is. So even when we are undependable, he is dependable. 
He is faithful because he cannot deny himself. You know, Jesus said to those people, you know, the Pharisees, he said, I cannot even deny that I'm God's son or else I'll be lying like you guys. What does that mean? You know, watch out for false humility. You know, they, they wanted to kill him because he said he was God's son. Making himself, he said, look, you guys, I cannot deny who I am. So watch out for false humility. In trying to be humble, oh, you know, we learned that you are a professor. <laughs> I'm just, a, you are lying. You are a professor. Oh, Herb, we learned that you studied law. <laughs> I'm just saying, you studied law, Herb. Amen. So watch out. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, I cannot actually deny myself. Amen. If you are blessed, you are blessed. Somebody comes to meet you, we learn that, you know, you are blessed. We learn you can afford this. Ah, it's not true. You know, I'm just saying, I hope your confession will not catch up with you. Be truthful. Truth is what? A way of life. Can someone say, I'm going to live a truthful life? He says, the Bible says it's better for you to have food to eat in your house than to have house helps lined up. You know, some people, you know, the life they live is so fake. You know, you drive a very big car, but you can't pay school fees. You drive a very big car, but you don't have food on your table. Sometimes you might need to sell that car. Amen. Sometimes you might need to just downsize. There's no point. There's no point. We know of people, you know, they do everything, you know, you, to get kids to go to private school. I understand private education. I understand the need for it. And please, if you can afford it, by all means. Please, by all means, give your kids the best. But I don't believe that it should cost you an arm and a leg. Because I know people who are like that back at home. The kind of people they are trying to copy are people who can bring out the money without any sweat. But they are having to work from morning to night. Those kids don't even see them. Those kids don't even, they don't even know their own kids. And I look at them. I say, the people you are trying to be like, they don't have to do this, waking up in the morning, toil, sorrow, costing you arm and leg. And by the time the child comes out of school, I hope she will still, you will still be there. Is somebody listening to me? Sometimes you could just get a tutor. Give the, the child extra coaching. My dad had a blackboard in the house. Oh my God. <laughs> I wonder what he was actually. Do you know that my brother, he came to see me two, three, just last week. And because, you know, I'm seven years older than him. I didn't even know he got that too. This man comes back from work, eats, self siesta, then starts. He has a blackbird with a tri you know, that stand. It's not a joke. And you have to do four to six lesson, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. When you are preparing for your common entrance with fivefold. I didn't even know Boye got it because, you know, seven years between us. He said, he tells his friends that, look, it's not about that. He said, look, I'm, I was privately schooled, but it was still what my father did that made it for me. He said, I tell my friends. What my, the attention my father gave to me. Because my father was a civil servant, so he had good time in his hand. They used to close at 3.30 p.m. that time. Before four, be sure. By quarter to four. You hear the sound of his car. He arrives. He eats. self siesta. Wakes up. If it's time for you to do driving lesson, phone care, go and put the L plate on the car. If it's a four to six preparing for common entrance, the blackboard is setting it up. He's not asking your opinion. You understand? The Bible, you know, I read a, an, um, a book, and one of the quotes there says, the best academy is the mother's um, is the knees or whatever it is. 
You know, what you learn from home, they never leave you. The training. But when people are out there looking for money, everything costing you arm and your arm, your leg and everything, and you don't have the time to, to put into your kids the values that will last them throughout their lifetime. Amen. The values that will shape their lives, that will mold their lives. The people that are, you know, with all the scandal coming out, the Catholic Church, all the fathers, the mothers, the whatever. The people that raise your kids were those people. Because <clears throat> no time. It's everywhere now. It's there in my country. Like I told you, a five-year-old child, a four-year-old comes back even after school, goes to lesson. I'm like, this is abuse and abuse, child abuse. Don't do that to a child. Well, that's another thing. Are you enjoying what we're talking about? The way of life, lifestyle. You, want, you must challenge your lifestyle. Is it the way of truth? Am I being truthful? Am I being honest? When we, you know, <laughs> they told me about one of my, oh, I have all of them. Got married to this guy. You're getting married to someone. Let's say somebody who is on, I'm getting married to someone. Like when we came to this country, full-time ministry. Amen. Full time. We didn't even, you know, have a church who put us on their support. Living by faith. And I remember somebody asking me, will you your kids go to private school? I said, we're here living by faith. I can't be calling house rent by faith and be calling school fees for three kids. And not for once did I even go to my husband. What do you think, you know, uh, private schools? What, what was he doing? Amen. You know your husband's salary and you're putting so much pressure on him. So where should he get the money? Still beg, cheat? You're not living the way of truth. Amen. It is true. I'm not saying ministry is poverty. We came into a country. Am I going to now say, don't I know about private education? But that we amount to living a false life. I know of people that call my country, my husband, please help me, you know, my, school, my children's school fees. I'm like, can you tell them to get a life? I mean, the person you are calling did not send his own kids to private school. You are asking him for school fees to pay your kids, money to pay your school. Your... Are you hearing yourself? Don't I know the way to, do I, don't I know the way to private schools? Hallelujah. Don't live a false life. And do expect God to back that up because it's not going to work. I'm going to continue the message. Well, let me round up by saying one or two things. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah. Have you enjoyed the word? Yeah. Amen. We're breaking it down. Amen. Making it applicable. The truth. Truth. In John 4, 23 to 24, Jesus said, But the hour... Is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. I'm saying truth is a way of life. Worship means they're going to serve God. Amen. Worship is not just when we come and sing a couple of songs, it's part of it. But when Jesus was speaking here, he wasn't talking about singing songs. Those who worship Him, he's talking about true worshipers. Can someone say true worshipers? True worshippers, they will worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, in integrity, in veracity, hallelujah, in genuineness. Psalm 15 verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. You see, when Jesus said those who worship him must do it in spirit and in truth. I'm giving the scriptures in the Old Testament now. And speaks the truth. That's the one that we abide in his tabernacle. Speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. Who are the people we celebrate today? Who are the celebrities we celebrate today? People whose lifestyle is so shady. 
whose lifestyle is anti the truth, which is the word of God, which is the truth. The word of God is the truth. But that the people we applaud, that the people we clap for, that the people we celebrate, that's why they are called celebrities. Bible says here, in whose her eyes a vile person is despised. Amen. Because the things that are actually celebrated by men, they are an abomination to the Lord. I watched one of, an, one of the episodes on my whatever, the, the, the minister thought, you know, the people were queuing up to get his autograph. They didn't know it was the, the one celeb. They just rushed to the woman. No, people won't prefer those celebs to their prime ministers. Are you following what I'm saying? When Andrew Murray, when he won the, what was it? The Wimbledon. The press were going on and on, talking about David Cameron, how David Cameron was trying to squeeze himself in to take photograph with Andrew Murray. I'm like, your prime minister is still in it. Wow. But that tells you, that is symptomatic of a sick society. Prime minister still in a sh- with <laughs> just got somebody just won. Look at it now. Did she win? Did he win the next Wimbledon? Look at how fleeting this world and its fashion are passing away. I just hope you are not building your life on things like that. Because when you are wearing the latest whatever people will celebrate you, is that not true? Go and check out children in the school. When they come, you know what my brother said he told his children? He said, do you know why people are all around you in your class? Why they love you? Because you are making it. You are getting good grades. If you stop, they are all going to leave you. That is the world. The Bible says everybody is a friend to a rich person. They trace their genealogy back to you. Amen. But when you are poor, and you can't pay your rent, as you show up, they show out. <laughs> Don't build your life on lies. And you know what I found out in the world? They have their values twisted the wrong way. I was saying to my husband, I said, I would have expected that the person you're going to value should be somebody who's been there for you. But you know it happens in churches. Why do people like their pastors who are very rich and very affluent? I was, you know, (laughs) saying to my husband, I said, there are some people that is when they don't have money, they come and talk to you. You know, Jesus, you know, Malachi, God said, what you have brought to me, take it to your governor if you even look at your face. I said, but when they don't have money, when they are struggling in ministry, that's where they come and talk to you. But when they make it, you know where they take their big offerings to? To the big men of God. I said, why? They dare not go to them and show those ones their true state of lack. A friend, a true friend, someone that knows you, accepts you the way you are. Someone you don't have to make an impression on. Someone you have to wait to have a big car before you can drive to their house. That's not your friend. That's why Jesus told the story of a friend at midnight. Someone you can go to their house at midnight with that dog's barking at you and biting you. That's a friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's build our lives on the truth. I would have expected that someone who stood with you when you had nothing should be the person that when God begins to bless you, you should celebrate together. That is my belief. But in the world, back again to some people I know, this girl... She always cooks food for this guy. Amen. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. He knows where to go. Because he doesn't want to make an impression. But where he wants them to see him as, you know, the girl he's trying to toast. Even if that one says, do you want some? Oh, I'm full. Amen. Oh, I just had a big lunch. Then he goes to this one and says, I'm broke. She gives him money. You know what? He takes the money and goes to flash the money. Can I take you out for coffee? 
Because those ones, he can't show his broke side to them. Those ones, he can't show his hungry side to them. Well, guess what? They are the ones he wants to marry. Not the one he can go to at midnight and say, I'm hungry. Not the one he can go to and say, I'm broke. But that is the person. Jesus said, if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. But you know what we do? You suffer with Mona, you go and reign with a celeb. <laughs> that is the world way of behaving. Those celebs that when, if they saw you at that raw state, they wouldn't even talk to you. But when you have made it, you will say, Mayfair, here I come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Oh, God is good. The truth sets you free when you know the truth. I love to celebrate with people who were there for me. The Bible says they were naked and not ashamed. Someone that you are not ashamed to say I'm broke. God said what you have brought to me, take it to your governor if he will look at your face. If he's going to consider your person, those gifts you are putting in an envelope. Because you know that that person, you know, we accept you anyway. That person loves you because a friend loves at all times. And those are the people you treat anyhow. And that is wrong. It shows how worldly you are. And may God continue to begin to change your value system. If, you, if somebody suffers with you, they should reign with you. That's why when people feel that they are rich, they change their wives. You don't need to change your wife. Amen. I say God is calling me to a higher height. There's no, there's no higher height. If somebody suffered with you, they should win with you. You see, the world and its values, you know what? We have all imbibed those values without even knowing they are worldly. And that's what I believe that by the time we conclude on this message on Wednesday, I'm going to now tell us what we need to be free from. Hallelujah. And just the benefit. Do you know that truth is one of your weapons? I said, put on the breastplate. No, the belt of truth. Your, sh your truth is my shield and my buckler. The integrity of the righteous shall protect them. Truth protects you. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember the last thing you said the other time. You have peace of mind. You don't have, you're not trying to impress anyone. Hallelujah. How many of you are trying to impress your husband? I'm not saying you should be bad and, you know, look funny. No, no, no. I knew of someone who told me that any time she cooks and she puts the food on the table, her heart is beating. Watching if the guy, if the food will be acceptable, if it's of standard. And I'm like, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Amen. Doing the signs of the cross many times. <laughs> and as he's putting the food in his mouth, she's watching the expression. <sighs> how long can you do that for? Even if you don't know how to cook, go and learn how to cook. But let him know that this is where you are. <laughs> and sometimes some men are even better cooks. Anyway, if you don't know how to cook, you might know how to do something else. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Have you received anything? We're going to continue on Wednesday and round up this message. You see, live a life of truth even before your kids. Live a life of truth. Don't pretend to be who you are not. I thank God that when we came to this country, we didn't pretend to our kids. We said to them clearly, I said to my kids, I studied law, but I didn't come here as a lawyer, okay? Your father studied engineering, but he didn't come here as an engineer. We came here as ministers of the gospel. Thank God we told our kids. I could have been flashing my legal training. Ah, that's fine, but I didn't come here as a lawyer. And my husband didn't come here as an engineer. And I remember we told our kids from the start. We told them. And I said to my kids, I said, you know those Chinese guys, when you go to the Chinese restaurant, take away, 
When they come back from school with perfect Chinese, uh, with perfect English accent, they are helping. Amen. You know, when we went to see Auntie Mona, let's remember, they weren't serving us. They're taking the orders. Perfect English accent. I said, so, if it is yam I'm selling, you will join me in selling the yam. Because you will not collect my yam money. I'm going to be posing and flashing it in school. You understand? Uh Uh-huh. That's how it runs. So, but this one, I'm not selling yam. This is what we are doing. Your father and myself. So you, you will drum. You, you will sing. You understand? You have voice. I said, why would I ask somebody else's child to do something and you will not do it? Truth. I'm not saying they are forced. They are enjoying themselves. You. Because if it is whatever I'm selling, you will sell. I had a lady like that. She was working so hard and teaching and her kids could come into this, I don't want to mention the school, a private school paying half the, 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 the school fees. You know what? She started despising what her parents had. Her mom would prepare lunch for her because of the other kids. I told her, may you not undo yourself. Take her out of that school. That is the truth. Is that all right? Take her out. Because she's going to use all. You are suffering. You are laboring. And she's despising what you can offer. Can you tell your child that this school she's in is because of your labor? I mean, the proprietress, we insult her. We say things to her. And she's stuck to the job just to... And that your child is despising you. Why? She's hanging out with the children of who is who. You're going to undo yourself. Let her know where you stand. If she doesn't change, take her. Amen. Oh, that's child abuse. You have your definition of child abuse. I have mine. We will compare notes later. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's break bread. Are you glad you received something? <laughs> Build your life on the truth. Build your kids on the truth. That's how it is. That's how it runs. Don't live a pretentious life. Don't go around struggling, working through the night, holding three jobs. And then your kids think that those things came on a platter of gold. They didn't come on a platter of gold. When they brought that water to David, he said, I can't even drink this water. This is the blood of men. And he poured it out. People who broke through the garrison of the Philistines. You walk through the night. You did three jobs. And your kids are just crossing their legs. You can't even call them to do anything at home. You know what? They are old enough to get their own house. It's a shortcut solution to all the problems. Let's go for counseling. There's no counseling anywhere. That's the counsel. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Just go ahead and give him thanks. Let the servers please come forward. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Let's celebrate the truth.